In 2023, Juventus were fined 20 million euros and handed a one-year ban from European competition for violating financial fair play. They were also docked 10 points in Serie A and dropped from 2nd to 7th place at the end of last season. So, what did Juventus do and why were they punished? Juventus were found guilty by UEFA of violating FFP in two ways. These were popularised as scandals in Italy and are known as Plus Valenza and Prisma. Plus Valenza literally translates to capital gains and reflects irregularities in the way Juventus were accounting for player transfers. Specifically, Juventus were found guilty of inflating transfer fees of sold players to book higher profits. They were also accused of working with other clubs on multiple suspect player plus cash swap deals many of which included youth players whose valuations are more in the grey, to artificially inflate profits and navigate FFP. Let's take a popular example to illustrate how this works. In the summer of 2020, Barcelona and Juventus engaged in a player plus cash swap deal for Artemelo and Miralem Pjanic. Juventus paid Barcelona a net 12 million euros and signed Arta, while Barcelona signed Pjanic. The transfer wasn't structured as a player plus cash swap, rather as two separate transactions. Namely, Barcelona would sell Arta to Juventus for 72 million euros and Juventus would sell Pjanic to Barcelona for 60 million euros. In effect, the transaction would be the same, a net 12 million euros in cash paid by Juve to Barca and then the two players swapping clubs. So why then was it structured as two separate transactions? Well, the key is in the respective transaction amounts and in how player transfer accounting works for FFP. Player sales can be booked as profit in entirety immediately, while player purchases are amortised over the duration of a player's contract. Miralem Pjanic was signed by Juventus in 2016 from AS Roma on a five-year deal worth 32 million euros. So, in the summer of 2020, he was entering the final year of his contract. His remaining unamortised book value was a paltry 6.4 million euros, the transaction fee of 60 million euros allowed Juventus to book an FFP profit of almost 55 million on Pjanic. But why would Barcelona pay 60 million euros for a player in the final year of his contract? Barca would only agree to a transaction like this if they were getting the same flexibility, which is why Juventus had to also inflate purchase prices, not just selling prices, in such swap deals. Arta's 72 million euro transfer fee, which allowed Barcelona to also book a hefty FFP profit on a five-year contract translated to about 14.5 million euros of amortization cost for Juventus. So, if we step back and look at the FFP impact for Juventus from both transactions, they booked roughly 55 million euros as profit on the Pjanic sale and spent roughly 14.5 million euros on Arta's amortization, meaning a net FFP profit of about 40 million euros. But of course, remembering what actually happened, they spent 12 million euros. And this is the heart of the Plus Valenza scandal. It has been reported that Juventus did this over 40 times in multiple transfers over multiple seasons. The club were initially found guilty by the Italian Football Federation and docked 15 points in Serie A. However, Juventus appealed and that decision was reversed because the prosecution weren't able to conclusively prove that Juventus had inflated transfer fees. This is because player transfer valuations are not an exact science. Juventus capitalised on this grey area in FFP accounting. However, UEFA independently investigated Juventus and did find them guilty of doing this. And this is part of the reason why Juventus were banned. The other part is Prisma. While Plus Valenza was about transfer fees, Prisma is about wages. Juventus were found guilty of misrepresenting the amount they spent on player wages during COVID. Specifically, multiple senior executives at Juventus, including Andrea Agnelli and Fabio Paratici, requested first-team players to give up wages for a few months. However, Juventus continued to pay them their wages off the books. So, while they reported publicly that players had given up wages and didn't reflect this in financial statements, they were actually paying the wages anyway and therefore misrepresenting club finances, which is a serious FFP violation. Juventus deny any wrongdoing, but Prisma led to a 10-point deduction in Serie A, meaning they fell from 2nd to 7th place. And this time the verdict was upheld, even on appeal. UEFA independently found Juventus guilty on Prisma as well. They then fined Juventus 20 million euros for both violations and banned them from European competition for one season. Juventus, interestingly, did not appeal this decision. 
Ultimately, the biggest benefit of accepting the ban is probably the certainty it brings. As Juventus' club president Gianluca Ferrero said, we do not share the interpretation that's been given of our defence, and we remain firmly convinced of the legitimacy of our actions. However, we've decided not to appeal this judgment. We prefer to put an end to the period of uncertainty and ensure full visibility and certainty to our internal and external stakeholders about the club's participation in future international competitions. And it was a turbulent period. In addition to the hefty fine and multiple rounds of points deductions, the entire board resigned in November 2022 and eight senior executives at Juventus received bans. This included an eight-month ban for Pavel Nedved, a 24-month ban for Andre Agnelli and a 30-month ban for Fabio Paratici, who was by then managing director of football at Tottenham, a position that he was forced to resign. Juventus will now be hoping for a much less dramatic 23-24 season, even if it is without European football. If you like this video, please consider subscribing to the channel. The Athletic is home to some of the world's best sports journalists, including David Ornstein, Daniel Taylor, Oli Kay, Amy Lawrence and Rafa Honigstein. With the latest transfer news and insight on every Premier League football story that matters, TheAthletic.com puts you inside football. And you can try it for free now for 30 days. See the link in the description.